This is a nice problem. It's easy to understand what it's talking about, but its solution is based on sufficiently deep mathematical ideas. Please take your time to read its conditions and question. First of all, all the points whose coordinates x, y, and z are not greater than n belong to the cube with dimensions n by n by n. Thus, the volume of the region of all possible points x, y, z is n cube. Uh, let's denote a to be the total volume of all the successful regions containing the points that satisfy the conditions of the problem. Then uh, the probability is equal a over n cube. How can we calculate the total volume of regions containing all successful points inside the cube containing all possible points? Well. Let's write down the formal algebraic inequalities that represent the conditions of the problem. The inequalities written in this diagram describe one region of points that uh, satisfy the conditions of the problem. Indeed, x is not greater than y minus 1, y is not greater than z minus 1, or as is written here, y minus 1 is not greater than z minus 2, which is the same thing. Uh, of course, in this case, x cannot be greater than n minus 2, because y cannot be greater than n minus 1, because z cannot be greater than n. And for the same reason, z must be not less than 2, because y must be not less than 1, because x must be not less than 0. Clearly, this region is not the only one that contains the successful points. There are other regions with similar restrictions but in different order of coordinates. But let us concentrate on this one region for now and we will deal with other regions later. Let us use a convenient substitution of uh, expression y minus 1 with new variable u and expression z minus 2 with new variable v. Uh, then we can rewrite our set of inequalities with new variables x, u, and v. Uh, you can see that these inequalities look much nicer than the original set of inequalities because they are perfectly uniform. We see in this diagram the cube with edge length n minus 2 in the new coordinates x, u, v. All the points of our region with restrictions x not greater than u and u not greater than v belong to this cube. From geometric point of view this region in coordinates x, u, and v is a so-called translated copy of the same region in coordinates x, y, and z. These two regions are congruent and parallel to each other. We don't know yet what geometric shape this region has, and we will find out. But surprisingly, it's easy to calculate its volume even without this knowledge. First of all, due to symmetry of coordinates x, u, and v in these inequalities, any other permutation of x, u, and v in these inequalities defines a region of exactly the same shape and size as this one. Secondly, there are 3 factorial equals 6. Uh, different permutations such as uxv, vux, etc. Each such region has its distinct arrangement of values of its coordinates and obviously all six of these regions combined 
include all the points in the cube. This allows us to conclude that the volume of each region is equal to one sixth of the volume of the cube, which is n minus two cube divided by six. So the volume of this region in coordinates x, y, z is also n minus two cube over six. Now, there are also six such regions with different permutations of values of x, y, z. And by symmetry of restrictions on their coordinates, these six regions are all congruent. Since they also have distinct arrangements of their values, and therefore do not intersect with each other, we can conclude that their total volume is equal n minus 2 cube over 6 times 6, which is equal n minus 2 cube. So the probability is equal to n minus 2 cube over n cube. The last step in the solution of this problem is to find the smallest integer number n for which this expression is greater than one half. After simplifying this expression a little bit, we can see that when number n is increasing, the probability is also increasing. Due to the restrictions of this problem, the first reasonable number n is 3. If we calculate the probability for n equals 3, we'll get 1 27th, which is less than 1 half. Uh, now we need to start gradually increasing n until we find the first integer number n uh, for which the probability is greater than one half. This number is 10. The answer is d. As a little bonus from calculus, we can notice that when number n approaches infinity, the limit for the expression 2 divided by n is 0 and the limit of probability is 1. It means that uh, the probability of selecting a successful point in the abstract infinitely big cube is equal to 1. Even though we have answered the question of the problem, it would still be interesting to find out the exact geometric configuration of one of the regions of points that satisfy the conditions of this problem then we could independently prove that our solution was correct. Uh, let us construct one such successful region in XUV system of coordinates. The diagonal of the left face of the cube is the graph of the function V equals U. The blue triangle inside that face contains all the points that have u coordinate not greater than v coordinate. So the prism between the two blue triangles in this diagram has all the points inside this cube that have u coordinates not greater than v coordinates. Also the prism between the two brown triangles in this diagram has all the points inside the cube that have x-coordinates not greater than u-coordinates. These two prisms include all eight vertices of the cube. The successful region is the intersection of these two prisms. Let us work like a carpenter and cut off those areas inside the cube that are outside of these two prisms. The first cut along uh, the two red diagonal lines cuts off two vertices of the cube surrounded by two red circles. The second cut along the two blue diagonal lines cuts off two more vertices of the cube surrounded by two blue circles in addition to those two vertices of the cube that are already cut off. Then the remaining four vertices of the cube form the pyramid that is our successful region. 
Its six edges are painted in green color. Notice that this is a peculiar pyramid whose all four faces are right triangles and two of its faces uh, belong to two faces of the cube, the left face and the top face. Let us consider the top face of this pyramid, its base. Uh, then the height of, it, of this pyramid is the height of the cube. The area of the top face of the pyramid is n minus 2 square divided by 2. The volume of the pyramid then is this area times uh, the altitude length uh, which is n minus 2 and uh, divided by 3. That gives us n minus 2 cube divided by 6. It agrees with uh, our earlier results. Now you can visualize the idea of this solution. Six pyramids congruent to this one are hanging inside the big cube n by n by n in xyz coordinates where this particular pyramid's left and top faces also belong to the left and top faces of the big cube. However, in the big cube it hangs in the middle between the front and back faces of the cube, having one unit of measure distance from each of them. This is due to our familiar restrictions on coordinates x, y, and z. x is adjacent to 0, z is adjacent to n, and y is in the middle between 1 and n minus 1. But if you parallelly slide all these six pyramids into the corresponding corners of the smaller cube in x, u, v coordinates, they will magically fill the entire cube. This problem strikes me as a real beauty. I hope that you too appreciate its elegant solution and that my explanations help you to understand it better than the brief description of its solution in the official AMC pamphlet.